guys and welcome back to another video. So after all of my other Camp America videos have been up on my YouTube, um, again I get loads of comments in the question, in the, I get loads of questions in the comment section asking me more questions. Um, so I feel like my Camp America like FAQs, like tips and tricks videos are going to just, just keep coming because obviously everyone still has new questions and obviously the more people that are watching my videos, the more questions those people have as well. Um, so this again is just like I've got a load of questions that have been asked over on all of my other videos and some are like such valid questions that obviously I've just forgot to put in on all my other videos um, and there's a lot of questions here actually so yeah didn't actually introduce this video it's going to be another frequently asked questions um, like a Q&A kind of thing a little bit more about Camp America um, again some really good questions that I asked myself before camp um, so I'm sure everyone else out there thinking about applying is asking themselves these questions as well um, so yeah like I said I'm going to get straight into it because I've got loads of questions um, so yeah right first question is can I bring food from home and I've seen kind of like mixed things about this from other people from different camps saying that they couldn't I personally could take food from home um, they didn't necessarily encourage it but they said like obviously you're, you're there for two three months if you want a bar of dairy milk take it with you because you can't get like chocolate in america is nothing like chocolate in the uk um they're like nice chocolate is like hershey's which to me tastes like our kind of like advent calendar chocolate i know that sounds really weird but you know your basic advent calendar you can get that you know tastes kind of like cheap chocolate like you know it's advent calendar chocolate that's what i feel like american chocolate tastes like so if you want some chocolate or you want something the favorite food that you love from home that you know you're not gonna be able to get definitely take it um i remember one summer i think it was my first summer i took quite a few snacks with me and i took some custard creams and obviously americans they don't they don't really say biscuits like they will call all biscuits cookies which confuses me because cookies to me are literally like chocolate chip cookies so i took loads of custard creams and um my campers loved them like they loved custard creams so yeah obviously as long as you're aware of like allergies in the bunk if you've got kids that have certain allergies to the food that you've got obviously you won't be able to have it in the bunk um but yeah camp my camper absolutely fine with you bringing food from home um just because they know like it's from coming from different countries like there's different foods different even like crisps sweets um like i took a fair bit with me as well for like my journey on the plane and stuff as well and yeah it was really nice for my campus to try some like proper like uk chocolate and sweets and stuff and like i say their chocolate isn't as like rich and creamy as ours is like our cadbury chocolate any chocolate to be honest is in my opinion so much nicer so they loved being able to try other chocolate and they were fascinated at the difference in taste when it came to chocolate so yeah Personally, I'd just reach out to your camp and kind of ask beforehand if you can take your own food in. Um, like I say, I've seen some people's videos where they've said that they weren't allowed. Like they took food with them thinking it was okay and then they couldn't have it in the bunk. So yeah, just reach out, email. They'll probably tell you if it's a problem because nine times out of ten, you'll be fine taking your own food with you anyway. So next question is, can I get packages sent from home? And again, depends on which camp you're at. For me, I could get packages sent and it was really nice. Um, my first and second summer, my mum and dad sent like a care package over. Um, my first summer, I didn't have any nice clothes. Again, I've mentioned, I didn't realise we'd go out quite as much as we did. So I remember messaging my mum. I was like, oh, I know you're going to send, like she wanted to send some chocolate and some kind of just like some little treats over for me. And I said, I was like, oh, can you put a few like nice tops into this package? Because I had no nice tops at this point and um so she sent something over to me it is quite expensive to send i think it cost maybe like 18 pound to send a package over um, i mean it was a relatively big package it came in like a box so it was a decent sized package um i think it probably took about a week to arrive maybe yeah you can definitely get packages sent again my camp i'm sure most camps you can as well um obviously as long as your camp allows external packages in so i know at my camp last summer they obviously i know i wasn't there but they tried to restrict the amount of packages coming in obviously because of covid and stuff um but yeah so fingers crossed by this year it's all fine and you can have packages sent over to you i remember though my second summer um my mom had sent again another care package over and it had one of those massive bars of the dairy milk marvelous creations my favorite chocolate ever and um i didn't know it had arrived and it was sat at the girls hc and in the literally in the sun and this massive bar of chocolate just 
completely melted so i ended up having to go and get like <laughs> this is so funny i had to go and get like a bag of ice from the health center and i put my melted bar of chocolate into this bag of ice and it like really like formed <laughs> it formed back into a chocolate bar so at least i was able to still eat it but yeah if you know you've got a package come in make sure you check in if it's there because you can have it left there someone might take it by accident thinking it's theirs um so yeah keep an eye out for it if you know you've got something coming just go and check like wherever your post comes every morning um you can also send letters and stuff home i took um like a letter writing kit just had like loads of different letters some envelopes some stamps and um obviously the kids write home as well uh, we tend to do that as often as possible obviously because they don't see their parents for seven weeks apart from visiting day that's right in the middle so yeah the kids are encouraged to write home as well um so it's nice to do it with them and then all year letters will just get sent in the same kind of like batch and it did take a while for mine to get home and some of mine didn't ever actually arrive so um but yeah it is nice that you can do that as well so i had this question asked quite a bit and i did touch on it in my packing video because i was talking about makeup and toiletries um but it's do people normally wear makeup at camp and again it's a complete personal preference like if you feel comfortable putting a bit of makeup on in the morning then that's completely normal like people will do that um me personally i don't wear much makeup at camp just because you're running around like crazy it gets hot um it's nice sometimes just have some sun cream on your face especially if you end up realizing you're going swimming it's nice to just know that you haven't got anything on your face especially when you're going in the water and stuff um so yeah but it's completely up to you um if you want to get yourself up a little bit earlier in the morning to do your makeup and stuff then fine um again people will wear makeup on nights out and like days off um that's definitely normal for people to get a little bit more glammed up knowing that we're going off camp and we're going out for either food or drinks or wherever we're going um and again for you traveling after if you know you've got loads of travel plans you'll be going out quite a lot take your makeup with you i'll take a decent amount of my makeup i did mention in my last video that you can get makeup obviously quite easily and it's a lot cheaper i found um at places like walmart target obviously you've got sephora so yeah don't take loads because if you do need extra you can stock up quite easily when you're there um so yeah so this next question is should i take my glasses or wear contact lenses and i've only just recently started wearing glasses um have never wore contact lenses so for me personally i'll take my glasses with me to camp i don't need to wear mine all the time mine's kind of just like more for when i'm driving or if something's really far away and i struggle to see it i'd put my glasses on then um but for someone that needs to either wear glasses or contacts all the time again it's a complete personal preference if you've got it's easy for you to take both i would take both and just see what kind of works better um i know people that have had glasses and contact lenses at camp and there's not really any sort of kind of like discussion between the two um it's just whatever you'd rather you'd rather have access to again i'd probably say take both just because it'd be easier so this next question is a little bit controversial um and it's what is the food like at camp and so many people that i went to camp with really disliked the food i personally loved the food at camp um my first summer i did put quite a lot of weight on um i think it was because i don't know if i've mentioned this in any of my videos yet but i'd got quite into the gym before my first summer at camp and having so much food so readily available as in everything was cooked for you you didn't have to think about oh going down to the kitchen go and do your food shop making all your dinner it was all there for you so i kind of took advantage of the fact that i wasn't having to cook so i did eat quite a lot and kind of like unintentionally bulked throughout the summer because i was still going to the gym a lot as well um i just ended up putting to be fair i put all that weight on in muscle that was the thing but it was all in my arms so my second summer i was a little bit more clued up about kind of like the foods i enjoyed a bit more because i like i say i was kind of eating for the sake of eating the fact that all the food was there um going on off on a bit of a tangent here we're supposed to just be talking about if the food is nice personally i love the food um you'll find that breakfast will normally be like cereals um yogurts you can always have like there's loads of yogurts um and each day it normally changed so sometimes we'd have like sausage and eggs there'd be like pancakes waffles what kind of other food did we have but yeah breakfast is kind of like your nice breakfasty food um i always used to try and stick to like yogurt and granola for breakfast again you've got access to loads of fruit all throughout the summer there's so much fruit um so yeah that's what i normally stuck to for breakfast um lunch 
lunch was great i used to love lunch the salad bar at camp my camp anyway was amazing like i loved the salad bar um so i would normally have like a salad to start and then i'd convince myself that was all i was gonna have and then they'd bring out like pizza or like chicken tenders and waffle fries and i was just like i need both now um but yeah lunches were nice to have like quesadillas um kind of like make your own lunches like you put loads of different things out on the table and they can kind of like build their own lunch stuff and there'd be loads of like veg and again like salad stuff for lunch and then dinner yeah dinner on a wednesday we always used to have well because i had a day off on a wednesday we didn't always get to have this meal but if we were back at camp for this we could obviously just go to dinner and every wednesday we had a barbecue so obviously like depending on the weather we'd have like a big barbecue set up outside um kind of things like hot dogs burgers veggie burgers veggie burgers at camp were incredible it was so good um like big slices of watermelon sweet corn um and everyone would sit outside on like the picnic benches and they'd have lunch outside or dinner outside so that was really nice and then we also had i think it was a monday we used to have something called food court which was like a variety of loads of different foods and again it was kind of like a buffet kind of service and you went round and you just helped yourself to whatever kind of food you wanted um but yeah i love the food at camp i ate really really well um but yeah I, there is so many options for everyone and if you have like a certain dietary requirement if you let camp know before you go they'll add you to the list of people that need kind of like different foods um so there's like loads of things for vegan vegetarians if you like just can't have dairy products um yeah so very easy to cater for lots of different kind of food requirements at camp so if that's kind of worrying you about thinking what could you eat don't worry about it too much because honestly the food and the things at camp that they can offer you is great and as well like when you go to walmart and target you can buy your own snacks like i remember having like a stash of like crisps um cereal bars just things obviously you can have in your cabin especially even if you get hungry like late at night you just want a little snack you've got stuff there so i had someone ask me this question it's kind of like did you find that there was any major differences between americans and like british people like was there any kind of like cultural crossover did you like struggle to interact with certain people and i thought this was a really interesting question um and i got on with every person that i met from everywhere around the world i found the only differences with americans and not even just brits but like other people is just kind of like the words they use for different things so like i had to get into the mindset quite quickly that they don't call trainers trainers you have to call them sneakers and if you call them trainers your kids will be like what are you talking about um things like you can't really say like oh can you go and take the rubbish out because they say trash there's just different like little terminology things that you'll have to pick up quite quickly they won't understand if you're using that terminology it's quite funny actually um and things like sweets they wouldn't say sweets they'd say candy um and their candy could be chocolate as well which confuses me because candy to me is just like that would just be sweets and chocolate is completely separate but yeah you'll pick up on that quite quickly because <laughs> they'll probably call you out on it they're like what what does that even mean um so yeah that's the only difference between is just trying to pick up the different lingo between different people kind of thing so next question is how often can i call home and again this is a really nice question because you want to know how often you can keep in touch with people back home and it is very easy again it all depends on the phone policy at your camp um like my first summer when we had complete access to our phones i would text and check in with home every day i mean i text my mom every day even when i'm in the uk and she's here with me anyway so it kind of depends on your phone policy again my second summer when we had kind of like restricted use of our phones i still you still could go and get your phone anytime that you weren't working so say if you wanted to wake up a little bit earlier in the morning and like me you wanted to go to the gym or for a swim or just for like a walk around camp you could go and grab your phone whenever um it's more just as long as they don't want you to have it in the bunk with the kids which i completely understand um but yeah if you wanted to like wake up a little bit earlier just so you could go and call home like that's absolutely fine and like i've mentioned in one of my other videos we had kind of like a wi-fi like laptop room people would just go and sit down again if you've got access to a um like you've got access to a travel sim card that you can call and text home from from like your uk number anyway um like that's ideal because it means you don't have to rely on the wi-fi to contact home um like i would go to the gym do a little workout and then I'd go and just sit at gymnastics and either i'd facetime my mom um call home speak to my mom my dad anyone at home so yeah it is really easy to stay in contact with home and like i say you do get quite a lot of time off like you get four nights off a week and one full day off a week and you'll find that on the day off everyone will kind of like split off and they'll speak to their families call home like in the morning before we set off to do something for the day so 
very easy to stay in touch with home. So if that's worrying you about kind of being homesick, um, not being able to stay in touch with your family and friends and stuff, it's very easy. It's very easy to do. So don't let that worry you. So this next one is what happens if I run out of money? And now this would obviously be quite a, quite a stressful situation if you get to camp and you feel like you're running quite low on money. Um, like I've said before, you don't spend a lot at camp. From the minute you get there, you, your food's paid for, your accommodation's paid for. The only thing you need money for is when you go for nights out and your days off. Um, so, like I say, if we spent a night off and we just go to Walmart just to buy some snacks or just, just to be off camp, just to be away from camp, you don't spend a lot there. You could go to the cinema, it was really cheap. There's nice little restaurants, again, really cheap. You don't spend a lot unless you're going with the intention to spend a lot. Um, even on a night out, like if we'd go out for drinks, you only have like a few hours off if you're off for the night and you don't spend loads because you don't have the time to. Um, so personally, I think you'd struggle to run out of money. Um, go with obviously a little bit of money already saved up if you can. And like I've mentioned, my camp, you can kind of choose when to withdraw your pay throughout the summer. So they give you like, I think it's like maybe three options to like fill out a little form. And if you want to request your money, they'll send it. I don't know if I mentioned this, so you do get given like a Oh, well my camp anyway you get given like a card like an american like debit card that just holds your like you your salary on that you get from camp um so you'll have all that set up and then the money will go on to there and then that's a physical card that you can use to obviously get money out to pay for things while you're in america um you can also i can't remember if you can bank transfer it very easily like bank transfer isn't as easy in america as it is in the uk like just hopping on your online bank and sending someone a tenner um so i can't remember how easy it is so make sure you do have access to money other than just waiting for your salary to come in um because that's when i think people will get a little bit stressed out because if you can't transfer it or withdraw it very easily you want to make sure you've got some money i think i mentioned try and take a couple hundred dollars in cash um or at least have access to another like travel card um like monzo is a really good travel card that i've used abroad like i've used in australia and bali and that's been brilliant um revolut is also a really good one um just that they're they're really easy to apply for and you just set it up as a link with your uk bank and you can transfer money so easily and most places you don't have um you don't have any charges like for using that card abroad because it's classed as a travel card so yeah if you if you think you're gonna run out of money obviously you can go and talk to your camp about having your salary say if it hasn't got to that certain date where you could withdraw you can always go and talk to them like if that's something you're really really worried about just go and talk to them and they'll try and come up with a solution um and again you want to try and make sure you've got enough money saved up of your own for if you're planning on traveling after as well um you don't want to get to camp and realize you're just living kind of like off your wages and then by the time camp's finished you've got no money to travel anyway um, but yeah, there's no reason why you should run out of money. Like I say, try and plan ahead, try and save a bit of money in advance, um, just so that you've got something behind you and you're not relying purely on your salary. So next question is, can you pick the age of kids that you work with? Um, and the answer is yes. They'll pull you aside, like during orientation, you'll have a chat with kind of like your head counsellors, um, more of like a get to know you chat. Obviously they'll all already have interviewed you, so they'll know about you. They'll have kind of like an idea of what age group you'll work with from before anyway from back when you had your interview but yeah within like three days of being at camp within orientation they'll take like groups at a time they'll just chat to you and try and find out like all oh, what kind of age kids have you got experience with um is there a certain age that you really want to work with that you really want to either be with the teenagers or you want to be with like the younger kids um they will take that into account definitely um and nine times out of ten you're going to be put where you've asked to be put unless you're talking to your head staff and they can kind of tell right they're giving me a vibe i think they'll work really really well with the younger kids like i can just see that they'd form better relationships have better connections working with those younger kids um that's the only time and then even then they'd still talk to you and say oh look i know you've said you want to work with this age but how do you feel about this and you can still say no like at the end of the day this is your job like you can still choose which group you want to work with um some people do move divisions even after the kids have arrived like if the kids get there and you're really struggling and it's not working out they will look at trying moving you around um because again if it's not working for you it's probably not working for the kids yeah they'll definitely try and they will take it into account and if you're not happy with this the decision that they've made 
they will work it out and they will try and like accommodate what you've asked for so yeah you can definitely choose that so if you're worried about thinking oh well i've only got experience working with like six and seven year olds what if they put me with the teenagers um it's unlikely that it will happen and even if they do try and make it happen you can always say look i'm not comfortable going with this age group i've got no experience with them can we possibly look at me going with the younger ones still so it's no issue at all so the next question is will i get to enjoy camp even as a specialist counselor and i've spoke about this a lot and i've said that obviously the main difference between a specialist and a general counselor is just that a specialist counselor stays at their specialist area all day and a general counselor goes around with the kids and goes to all the different activities and even as a specialist you will still get certain periods off unless you're kind of a lifeguard you'd struggle because obviously they need you at the pool unless you've got loads and loads of lifeguards and you can rotate and have periods off um like nine times out of ten you'll get the occasional period off where you can go back and join your group of kids and do whatever activity it is they're doing and um, there is also a lot of time throughout camp when we have certain events on that specialist areas will be closed so for things like um las bowl which for us is like this massive like american football tournament um girls and boys invitational which is a big basketball tournament things like that certain specialist areas will be closed because they want specialists to be able to enjoy that and get involved with camp as well but yeah so you do definitely definitely get the opportunity to experience camp from kind of like a general counselor's point of view as well um and then for us at my camp the last week of camp is color war which is this big event i have mentioned before the whole camp is split into two teams blue and white and um you won't have any specialist things going on that whole week like your specialist areas will have closed before then um and yeah so you definitely get the experience, the chance to experience camp as a general counsellor, even as a specialist. Um, but if you're kind of torn between the two and you really want to be able to do camp with your campers and stay with your kids all day, then general counsel will probably be kind of like the role that would be better suited to you. But yeah, you can definitely still enjoy camp as a specialist counsellor. Like you can get to arts, arts and crafts, you can go swimming, you can do things that camp offer very easily as well. Um, like I said, for me, I was really lucky down at gymnastics because a lot of the time we weren't really busy. Like we have obviously like set periods where the campers have to come down and then there's something called an elective when they'll get given the choice between a load of different activities and they'll choose which one they want to come down to. Um, so if only three kids chose they wanted to come down to gymnastics and I had three coaches down, there's no need for all three of us to stay there. So I'd give one of us the period off and say, right, go and either see your kids, go and have a little relax, like do what you need to do. Um, so yeah, I was really lucky in the fact that I could do that and we could just go and then spend time with our group of kids. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. So this one, this next question is kind of like pre-camp before you even get there. And it's like, what if I end up not being able to go to camp? Will I still get my money from my agency back? And now this is quite a tricky one. Um, nine times out of 10, probably not. It depends the circumstances. Um, if you've just decided that, you don't fancy having the summer away from home. You just want to you just want to stay in the UK or wherever. Um, nine times out of ten, you're not going to get your money back because it, it's not that your agency haven't been able to find you a camp to go to. It's that you're obviously choosing not to go. Um, so I wouldn't say that you would get your money back. Again, depends on circumstances. If something's come up that you really can't get to camp, then obviously that's different. And you could just email them and ask what your what your next steps are most of the time they will just carry your application over to the next summer so say if something's come up and either you've got something you need to be in the uk for and it's july and you realize oh i can't get to camp because that's smack bang in the middle normally they will just be able to carry your application over to the next summer so you won't have lost the money but normally you can't get the money back the only way i know a lot of people got their money back um obviously over the past two years was because we couldn't physically get to camp because of covid um my funds literally for this summer have been carried over from 2020 is it 2020 yeah um so i paid my i think i paid my money for camp at the end of 2019 to come in 2020 obviously then couldn't go carried it over again for last year couldn't go again so it's carried over for this year so they are really good in the fact that if things like that come up they will just carry it over and you won't lose the money but you won't normally get it back um my brother managed to get his funds back but again that was because he couldn't go another year so for him last year I think was going to be the only year he could have gone back to camp so he couldn't use the option of the fact that he, they could carry it over and obviously you can kind of argue if they couldn't provide the service that you've paid for 
that's when you can have your money back. But obviously, if this summer, everything, fingers crossed, is all going to go ahead. So next question is, how do you get from the airport to camp? And again, this will vary depending on what camp you go to. Um, for my camp, we had to fly into either Newark, JFK or LaGuardia. I think that's what it's called. I've never flown into LaGuardia. So my first, I think my first two summers, to be honest, I've flown into Newark just because it's a really easy airport to get into. I find as well, most flights are cheaper when you fly into Newark because um, JFK is very more central New York, like Newark's a little bit out the way. Um, and then to get to my camp, we had to get into New York. We had to get to, I think it was called Port Authority, the big like coach station that goes to so many different cities in America. Um, we had to get to that. So we did have to end up going into New York anyway. Um, get to this bus station, buy a ticket. The nearest town to my camp was called Honesdale um, in Pennsylvania. So I had to book, like go and buy a ticket to get to Honesdale and then... I just remember my first summer. I just remember my first summer. My mom literally put me on this bus on my own. And I've mentioned this before. I just cried. Like, I won't even lie. I cried the whole way because I was like, I've just left my mom in New York. I'm on my way to Pennsylvania. Like, what am I doing? Um, but no, obviously, it was all fine by the time I got there. Um, but yeah, nine times out of ten, you'll get a bus um, after you've flown into whichever whichever state is closest to your camp. Um Last year, my camp were debating, obviously, like sending their own coaches to pick us up. Again, this was because of COVID and stuff. They didn't want us to land in America and then get on a coach with a load of people that could potentially have COVID as well. Um, so, yeah, they were. I don't know if they did do that because obviously most international staff couldn't get there. So most people, Americans, I think they drove. Um, I think a lot of people drove to camp last year. But, yeah, they were offering to send us on coaches. So it really depends on your camp. They could do that normally. They could have a coach that is specific just for your camp. Um, my second summer, my mum and dad did actually drive me to camp. And I think that's the plan this summer as well. They're thinking of flying out with me. We'll have a couple of nights in New York and then they'll drive me to camp before they go off on their little holiday as well. Um, so, yeah. It is very easy to get to camp. Like I say, if you joined all of your Facebook groups and your WhatsApp groups, you'll find people that are going to travel on the same day. You'll probably be able to fly with someone on the same day as well. Yeah, it's a lot easier, obviously, if you've got someone to do it with you because I technically did do it on my own. My mum literally took me to the bus station and I was then on the bus on my own. And in a way, I kind of wish I'd reached out to more people to find out who was on my bus because by the time I got to camp, there was about 15 of us that were from my camp and I just didn't know that they were there. And I'd felt so much better if I could have, sat and talked to people on the bus before I got to camp, but I didn't because I didn't know who anyone was. So yeah, just reach out to people, try and sort it. So last question is, should I book my traveling before going to camp? And again, this is quite a controversial one because both my summers I've had things booked to be doing. Like I haven't gone with no plans. And my first summer, I had to leave virtually as soon as camp finished because my, my brother's 18th birthday and I wanted to be home for that. So I ended up coming home straight away. And then my second summer, there's actually such a funny story behind this and I'm not going to get into it in this video. But I ended up having to go on a holiday with my ex-boyfriend because we'd booked, <laughs> we'd booked stuff to do like at the start of the year, planning that obviously we'd go there once I finished camp. We ended up breaking up and yeah but the holiday was still booked so that's a whole that's a whole other story time so if i were you i'd try and go with open plans like this is that's my plan this year like to have no plans at all and to make them as i go as i get there because you don't know what's going to happen like even if you've booked to do something with a friend from home and they're going to fly out and meet you you don't know what can happen in that space of time and to be honest you're going to meet so many people that are doing the same things as you and they want to go and do the same they're, they're going to have the same travel plans as you so go with an open mind go with the idea that you're just going to wing it you're going to meet people there obviously you can have an idea of places you want to go to like i would love to go over to the west coast and sort of do like la vegas san francisco um so you can go with obviously ideas and then you'll find that so many people that you meet at camp are going to have similar ideas anyway so yeah i would personally based on my personal experience don't book things before you get there because you don't know what's going to happen in that short space of time that you're at camp. So, yeah, that's my little top tip for you all. But yeah, like I say, go with ideas, go with plans. And then as soon as you get to camp, you will talk about that quite a lot. People will start asking straight away. Oh, like, have you got any travel plans for after the summer? Like, where do you want to go? Like, what are your ideas? And if someone's got the same, you're just going to partner up, 
get into a, that you'll find that there'll probably be a big group of people like when we finished camp my second summer i'd got a few days um before <laughs> my trip with my ex and um a load of us ended up going into new york and we stayed for two nights i think um and it was just nice to have a big group of people like you knew loads of people that were going to be there so that's what will happen with your travel plans um you you will find that a lot of people are out there wanting to do the same kind of places explore the same things so yeah go with an open mind don't travel don't book things before you go you can book a return flight like i'm going to book my return flight before i get there i'm going to book it as one so you'll have a rough date of when you're going to come home and then it's quite easy to obviously know right i've got three and a half weeks i can fit all of this in let's get that done but yeah so i'm going to just book my return flight and then however much time i've got in between i'm gonna i'm gonna go crazy and like i said it's gonna be my first year that i've been able to properly travel around the states so i want to do it properly and i want to do it well so yeah right so i think that is all the questions for today um if you have enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe and um, it means the absolute world to me i've had so many people come from my youtube channel messaging me over on instagram again asking for tips on applying um asking me loads of questions and it's so nice that i do know these videos are helping so many people um so yeah please please keep your eyes peeled because it's going to be lots lots more camp america content coming i'm thinking at some point this week or next week i'm going to go and do like some camp america shopping like i'm going to go into birmingham and go to primark get some like travel essentials and um, start stocking up because it's already coming up to the end of january and it feels to me like it was just new year so camp is going to come around so quick um i am also i've got a summer suitcase in the loft somewhere so at some point i'm going to sort through that so i know what kind of things i've got and what things i need to buy and then i'm going to make a list and do a little bit of shopping and then i think i'll do like a camp america haul um because this is stuff that you can start buying whenever like you don't have to wait till right before camp to get stuff ready so i'm going to try and be really organized this year and get things done get things sorted so yeah thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video